Hello everyone, this is Dr. Cleopatra Gordon Pusey again with Life is Beautiful MD and Life is Beautiful Ministries. Welcome back to our channel. Trust you had a wonderful week. We just thank God that we are here together again. He say where two or three are gathered, he's in our midst and we just thank him that we are here and we are six feet above ground. Today is 9-11, September 11, 20 years ago. We saw all that happened uh, with the Twin Towers. I was living in New York at the time. I was living in Long Island. I was in medical school and it's so funny that in June I dreamt about, you know, I dreamt and saw like two, was like, the, it was two helicopters and it had like Holiday Inn written on it and I dreamt and saw the helicopters like went into the building and then I saw a lot of bodies on the ground and I saw a lot of people and it was a lot of chaos and a lot of body bags and I didn't understand what that was but that was June 20 years ago before September 11 happened so June July August and September so I dreamt that and it bothered me so much that whenever we were driving anywhere whenever church was going on a trip and we were in the bus I would tell the bus driver to just slow down because I dreamt and saw a lot of dead bodies on on the road I didn't understand what none of it was and then the morning of September 11th um, I remember I dropped my sister-in-law to work because I was home studying, you know, to take my boards. My birthday is September 13, and I was also planning a birthday party. But I remember I dropped her to work, and I came back, and I was in my kitchen. I was sitting there, I was eating something, and then I was eating my breakfast. And then when um, something just came over me, like something just came over me, and I just felt the need to just pray and pray. And I said, God, whoever needs you right now, just please be there for them. And that's the prayer I prayed. And as soon as I said, amen, my husband called me on the phone and said, turn on the TV right now. And as soon as I turned on the TV, it was right in time for me to see the second plane going to the second tower. And my God, I remember I felt, you know, so afraid and because we lived in Long Island. And so we thought, you know, people were going to come and war was going to start and they were going to start bombings. But we trusted God then and we, we have to just continue to trust God now. I, you know, I remember... You know um the kirk franklin song here's my here's my you know story you can lean on me and that's the song that brought me through and to this day every time i hear that song it reminds me of 9 11 9 11 and that's what kept me through so today i'm here to talk to you about you know the b-i-b-l-e basic instruction before leaving earth and trusting god in uncertain times because I remember that time 20 years ago, it was uncertain. We lived in New York and Long Island is not far from Manhattan where all of this happened and we were worried, you know? And we just thank God that things have gotten better. And now we're in another different kind of uncertain time with this pandemic all around us. And this one is like, you can't, you can't see it. You can't see it, but it's just there. And you just have to be so careful and everybody is just so on the edge but we have to just trust god in this uncertain time and do everything that we need to do to protect ourselves cover ourselves not just cover in the blood of jesus but physically whatever covering we need to cover with our mask with our shields with our everything we should just cover i am going to just read the scripture passage for you it's about trust a prayer of relief um, psalm 56 verses 1 to five it says be merciful to me O god for man will swallow me up fighting all day he oppresses me my enemies would hound me all day for there are many who fight against me almost high whenever i am afraid i will trust in you and that's verse three psalm 56 verse three whenever i'm afraid i will trust in you in god i will praise his word in god i have put my trust i will not fear what can flesh do to me all day they twist my words and their thoughts are against me for evil but the most important part i want you to remember psalm 56 verse 3 whenever i'm afraid i will trust in you you know the book of psalm was written by david and you know david was a man after god's own heart i like to talk about david because he's been through so much he had a lot of promise and he was in uncertain times because when samuel anointed David to be king it took many years before David became king and Saul was after him Saul was the king at that time and he was after David and even tried to take David's life multiple times 
but good prevailed over evil. And that's all I am leaving with you today, that good will always prevail over evil as long as we trust God. God has brought me through so much, so much, so much, so much. That's why I'm not leaning onto my own understanding or leaning onto man's own understanding. I'm leaning onto God's own understanding because he who began a good work in you is faithful to complete it. And he's brought me this far, and I know he hasn't brought me this far to leave me. And I know he has brought you this far to leave you. So I just will just continue to trust in God and put our faith and trust in him because he is an awesome God. You know, I remember when I was a little girl, this lady used to come when I lived in Jamaica. This lady used to come. She was a very spiritual lady, and she used to come. And she would warn and say, like, someone is going to die. She would, like, say, sudden death, sudden death. And sometimes she goes in front of houses and she would put X's there. And then, lo and behold, like, a week later, a month later, the person in that house would die. I remember even my own uncle, when my uncle was um, working at Trelawney Beach Hotel in Jamaica. We grew up in Salt Marsh and Falmouth. And the lady lived in Falmouth. She was a spiritual lady. And she came to Salt Marsh, where we lived. And she was just on the road, on the main road, and she was just saying, you know, run with the young man, run with the young man, sudden death, sudden death. She just kept saying it over and over. And she literally walked, you know, on the street and put an X in front of my uncle's house. And, you know, we were all there, we were all looking, we were all wondering what was going on. And I don't remember how long after, for the week or a month, I was a little girl, I don't remember. But all I know, my uncle died. He was a, he was a lifeguard and he worked at Trelawney Beach, and he drowned in the pool. And this thing baffled me for the longest time because I'm saying, how would this lady know? She lives in another town, but she came to our town and warned on the street, sudden death, and my uncle died, my uncle drowned. And as I you know, grew up in Jamaica and got older, I would, be, I would dream and see a place, and then my mom or my dad, would, they would take me driving, and I would see the place. And I would think I saw this place before, and you know, like even my aunt, when she was getting married in Jamaica, I dreamt and saw the auditorium she got married in before we went there. And we went there for the reception. I saw that's where, that's where I was. And all throughout time in high school, I had, we had this young man. He was, um, he was a Muslim guy, and I didn't even know he was a Muslim guy, but he ran track with us. And I remember I had this dream that I saw this young man that he got shot. Um, at a corner store and they wrapped him up in this white sheet and you know and they buried him and I didn't understand because I didn't see the man's face but that's what I dreamt and I remember this same young guy his name was was Melvin and he was he was in her class in class of 92 but he didn't make it and um, I remember we were running track and when track was finished and we were all you know going home I remember I had a bag with a red a very fine juice, red juice inside a brown paper bag. And he and I were walking and he accidentally knocked the bag out my hand and the bag fell on the ground and the glass broke and just all the juice, the red juice was just coming out of the bag. And both of us, me and him, we were standing there looking at the bag and he was so apologetic and apologized to me. And it's so ironic that I think a week or a month later, I don't remember how long, but this dream that I had about this man that was in this, you know, wrapped up in this white sheet, somebody had shot him. And the same guy that I told you, we were standing together and the bag, he, he accidentally hit the paper bag on my hand and the juice in the bag broke and the red juice was seeping out of the brown bag. It was so symbolic because this same young man was at a corner store and, you know, they say, or African-American neighborhood, it's a bad thing, but we say at the wrong place at the wrong time and somebody accidentally shot this man and he died. Melvin died and I remember it was so heartbreaking and I didn't even know he was a Muslim and they wrapped him up just the way I had the dream before. I, they wrapped him up just like that and he got buried. You, you may be wondering why am I telling you all of this? I'm just telling you that to say that God shows us things. He shows us things in advance. He showed me 9-11 before 9-11 occurred and he showed me that in June and it occurred in September and then this other dream with Melvin. I have so many other dreams. You know, I had a young man in my office. His name was Kevin and he was a medical assistant and I didn't even know Kevin drove, out. he rode a mo motorcycle and I kept just having a dream that I saw this young man that like he was a baby and I dreamt that his family was in, his mother and his father was in a different state and then he was somewhere else. And then when I looked, it's like I saw 
somebody like dead in the street and I saw like a red sneaker in the street and I didn't understand and the dream was so bothersome and so worrisome and I was telling my husband and then I came home one night and I fell asleep on the couch and the dream came back to me again that you know something's gonna happen to somebody in the office and then I told my husband and he was telling me you know you need to go get some rest you're not you're not sleeping enough so you're you're thinking things in your head the next morning I had another dream again and God placed it in my heart to go to my office and speak to the young people in my office. At that time, I think we had about 15 to 20 people between medical students, nurse practitioner students, and employees. And I went to the office and I told my husband what I was going to do. And as much as I was a reverend, he told me, you know, no, you can't do that. People are gonna think you're crazy. I said, well, I'd rather people think I'm crazy than disobey God. God told me to go to my office and I went to the office, I told everyone to, the MAs, everyone to tell the patients to wait. Just wait in the, you know, wait and we'll be right there. I called everybody in my office, all the students, all the uh, workers, and we all went into my office. There was about 15 of us. And I told them that I keep having this dream that somebody's gonna pass away. And the Holy Spirit told me to come here to tell you to, you know, let's pray for ourselves and pray for each other and let's repent of our sins. And it's so crazy because in that room, I had medical students, I had nurse practitioner students, we had Muslim, Indian, you know, all different people from different races, um, believers, non-believers, Christian, non-Christians, Catholic, we had everybody in that room. And I literally say to them, don't leave this place, don't leave my office and go tell anybody that Dr. Gordon is putting her religion on you. I'm just obeying what God told me to do. And I literally, you know, told them, the dreams that I was dreaming and the young man was there, Kevin, and I said to him, Kevin, I don't know why I keep dreaming about your aunt and you know your aunt died and I keep dreaming about her and I saw her house and her house is gutted. Like it was empty, there was no windows, there was no doors, it was just like an empty, empty space. And I pointed to Kevin and I said, Kevin, I don't know why I keep dreaming about your aunt and Kevin is big and tall, Kevin is about like six, six four and so he's a big tall guy and all he did he just held his head down like that and he just he didn't say anything but i told him everybody held hands and i said pray for yourself and let's pray for each other um just pray for god's you know protection and guidance upon all of us and after we did that everybody prayed for themselves prayed for each other i asked my husband reverend Pusey to pray and after he prayed i told everybody to go hug three people and you know people were um you know, some of the young ladies started, you know, it was almost, it was almost Thanksgiving, Halloween, that kind of time around there. And I remember some young people were saying, you know, Dr. Gordon, I was going to go to some horror fest up in Tampa or wherever. I'm going to change my mind. I'm not going because people started crying in the office. It was 15 of us and people just started crying in the office. But I, you know, hugged each other and tell everybody just to pray and trust God. And I didn't even know Kevin drove a bike. And, you know, when God gave me this dream and this vision, he said, you're going to speak about this for time and time to come. And here it is almost probably like seven years and I'm still speaking about this. The long and short of the story is that, you know, after we left the room, I felt like, thank God, I, I did what you asked me to do. You asked me to go deliver this message and I did. And about a few weeks before Thanksgiving, it's like within a month of what happened, I... We were home on a Sunday, and again, this feeling just came over me, and I felt, you know, I felt like I wanted to cry. And as soon as I, you know, was driving home from the hospital, one of my, my cousins that worked at my office, Tori, she called me and she said to me that, did I hear what happened? I said, no, what happened? She said, Kevin. I said, what, what about Kevin? She said, Kevin, I'm getting goosebumps as I'm speaking to you. She said, Kevin passed away. I said, how can Kevin pass away? He was riding on his bike and somebody drove up behind him and hit him off the bike and he flipped off the bike. Kevin usually wears his helmet, he had a breastplate, he had neck, he had everything. And Kevin flipped off his bike and died on the spot. And just like how in my dream I saw the red shoe, that's how it came on the news. The red sneaker in the road, it was just like that. It was there like that. And his mother and father, just like I dreamt that mother and father was away at a place and they had a baby, Kevin was the mother and father was away they were in georgia visiting some other people and kevin was here and he got knocked off and i was his primary they were calling me from the hospital and they pronounced kevin dead and i promise you i mean it was it was painful it was like losing a brother because and i tell you this young man 
when anybody was giving trouble, he would just come to the office and Dr. Gordon, Dr. Gordon, this lady, she, 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 she strived me today. But he would never curse, he would never fuss, he was just the nicest, most beautiful soul. And I didn't even know that what we did in the office that day, how much it impacted Kevin. We went to Kevin's house and I met his fiance. She came from Canada and she was telling me that I told, Kevin told her the dream and Kevin said he was gonna stop riding his bike. He was gonna stop riding his bike and that he, you know, he was changing his life around and she, she told me that it affected him that much. But I, you know, <laughs> I'm going even further, let me, Everything I dreamt, I even, I forgot to tell you the part about how I dreamt and saw a procession of bikes leading the hearse to the cemetery. And when I tell you that we went to Kevin's funeral and I was able to sing at Kevin's funeral to about like between the wake and the house and the funeral, it's about a thousand people. I got to tell this thing to over and over, this dream that I dreamt and how I dreamt everything. And when Kevin was going to be buried in Fort Lauderdale from the funeral home, 100 bikes just like i saw in my dream the bikes in front of the hearse taking the person to the funeral uh the, the burial site that's exactly how it was everything i dreamt in the dream to the t came down till you know people heard and everybody at the hospital was asking me about you know what's this dream you had and what happened because remember i told it to 15 people that someone is gonna die and then when the time came all the students had left when they came back to the the funeral and the wake all of them came one by one and told me, Dr. Gordon, I was driving on I-95 and this truck hit my car. The, six, the tractor trailer hit my car and the way my car folded up. When I got out of the car and saw that I was alive, all I could remember is that dream that you told me to pray for ourselves and pray for each other. And so many other students came out of the 15 and told me how many things had happened to them. But I followed God and I, I asked God to, you know, not to be ashamed of him, but I wasn't ashamed of him. I went and I told everyone exactly what he told me to do and it's so funny i said god you asked me to go talk to my office staff and i spoke to them and i said where is kevin can you show me where kevin is and believe it or not it's like we were in heaven and i saw kevin like sitting at a big table like he made it in so i don't even just blessed to be a blessing and the steps of a good man is ordered by god and that's why Hi everyone, it's Dr. Cleopatra Gordon Pusey again with Life is Beautiful Ministries and Life is Beautiful MD. Welcome back to our channel. It's good to see each and every one of you where two or three are gathered. God is in our midst. Trust you had a wonderful week. We are commemorating today, 20 years ago, September 11 occurred. I remember where I was. I was in Long Island and I remember I was so afraid and I was so scared um, because in June, at that 20 years ago, I kept dreaming about, you know, a lot of bad things happening. I dreamt and saw like a Holiday Inn helicopter flying into a building, two Holiday Inn helicopters flying into buildings. And then I saw a lot of dead bodies on the floor and I saw a lot of body bags. So I was very worried. I didn't know what was happening. I didn't understand the dream. I wrote it down, but all I know, wherever we were going with our church group and we were driving on a big bus i remember telling the driver to please just drive slow because i saw all these dead bodies on the street and i didn't understand what it was or what it meant but this is what i dreamt in june and july august september 11th um the twin towers came down you know with the planes flying into them and god you know it's so traumatic and i can't imagine the people that lost their loved ones in such a tragedy but god is in control and we may not know what the future holds but we could trust the one who holds the future we're in another similar situation right now uncertain times but i'm here to tell you to trust god in uncertain times because god is in charge and as long as we put our trust and faith in him he's going to lead us and guide us and show us what to do psalm 56 verse 3 says i will trust in god and i will not be afraid you know, Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge God and allow him to direct your path. God has been directing me for all these years, and I'm trusting him to direct me, to see me through to the end. So, you know, he was the one that, with two white coats and $500, I went to Dominica and came back, you know, went to Dominica and became the first student of color president for Ross University there. And then when he told me to move from Connecticut to 
New York to Long Island. After I did that, I, I married my husband, I got baptized, different order, but I did all of that. I got into medical school, so all the good things happened. The steps of a good man is ordered by the Lord, and as long as God is leading you and guiding you, then you don't have to worry about what to do, what step to take, where to go, because he's leading you. You know, when we were coming to Florida, same thing. You know, God led us here and led us to this beautiful home that we have, and even before we even signed any contract, the house, we bought the house before we got the jobs. And that's just walking out on faith and trusting God to do what is best for you. So just in these uncertain times, just trust God and put God first. Don't take any step or leap of faith without God. If God wants you to go, he'll make the path smooth and straight for you to go. So just trust him, put all your faith in him. Don't let anything scare you or worry you. As long as you do what it is that you're supposed to do, do your part, and God will, God will do his part. So you do your part, God will do his part. So just trust in him with all your heart. Lean not onto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge God and let him direct your path. Because in this uncertain times, we can only trust God. We may not know what the future holds, but we can trust the one who holds the future. So just be blessed. I'm going to sing this song for you. It's grace thrillers, his blood will carry me. As long as you're covered under the blood, God will carry you. Just do what is it that you're supposed to do.